Do you know how to calculate a rate of change? When you use a slope in a real world problem, it often has to do with a rate of change. Let's take a look at a real life problem so that you can see how this works. Devin has a brand new motorcycle. He fills it up with gasoline and then goes on a trip. Devin uses two gallons of gasoline after a hundred miles. What is the rate of change? The first thing we're going to do is create a graph to show the relationship between gallons of gasoline and miles. Here's our graph. It showed that Devin put five gallons of gasoline in his tank when he started. Then he traveled a hundred miles. Notice that the red arrow shows how many gallons Devin used, negative two, and how many miles he traveled, which was 100. Here is our relationship of rise to run. Now we can simplify this to figure out the actual slope and the slope is the same as the rate of change. This simplifies to negative 1 over 50. But what does that mean exactly? It means that Devin uses one gallon of gasoline for every 50 miles that he travels. This is the rate of change with regard to gasoline. What if we didn't want to draw a graph? Is there another way that we could solve this? Yes we can use a formula. Take a look. Now, in order to do, use this formula, we're going to have to have two sets of coordinates that we create from the problem. We know from the problem that at zero miles, Devin had five gallons of gasoline in his tank. So our first one is zero five. And you can say that this is miles and this is gasoline because that's what we're comparing, x and y. So at zero miles, Devin had five gallons. Then at 100 miles, he had used two gallons, which means that he had three gallons left. Here are our two ordered pairs. Now let's substitute these two ordered pairs into this equation. We can call the first set of ordered pairs x1, y1, and the second set, x2, y2. Now you know which coordinate to put where. Here we have 3 take away 5 in the numerator and 100 take away 0 in the denominator. Here we have negative 2 gallons for every 100 miles and we can simplify that to negative 1 for every 50 miles. Notice that whether we use the graph and figured out the slope or whether we used this formula, our answer is the same. So now you have two different ways of figuring out the rate of change with a graph and with a formula. Here are the two ways to find the rate of change. Take a minute to write these down in your notebook.